Just before we partake of the Lord's Supper, I want to just deal with two words. Two wonderful things that happen to us. And uh, Jesus Christ is the key to both of them. First of all, he came into the world, the Bible says, to redeem us. To redeem us. The Apostle Peter tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your ancestors, but with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. The Greek word for redeem is latruo, and it was the idea of being delivered by means of a payment. And the price that was paid was called a ransom. Uh, Jesus tells us, he says, I came to give my life a ransom for your salvation. Redemption from a life of sin and separation from God has been made possible by the sacrifice that Jesus Christ made on the cross of Calvary and his shed blood. Christ's death on the cross, folks, was not fiction. It's fact. It's fact. Christ died for you and for me and for everybody in the whole world. Not only did he die, but he died a violent death. There wasn't anything pretty about it. It was a violent death. And his blood was shed to atone for our sin. So redemption is made possible for everyone in the whole world, but only those who receive Christ as their Savior and Lord are truly redeemed. Truly redeemed. There's another word, esagorazo, that means to buy or to buy out. And Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20 says, you were bought at a price. You were bought at a price. Christ died for the ungodly and Christ died for us. <clears throat> Romans 5 9 says, We have been justified by his blood. So remember the word redeemed. Beautiful word, powerful word, and word that we should cherish because it means that we can be set free from a life of sin and destruction by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. There's another word that I just want to use this morning, one of my favorite words in Scripture, and it's the word reconciled. Reconciled. It's one of my favorite biblical words, and I think it was one of Paul's favorite words as well. The word reconcile means to restore to a harmonious relationship. When we're unconverted, when we're not saved, we're not in harmony with the God who loves us. Things are out of sync. Before we're saved, we, we're, our lives are filled with discord and sour notes. Sin, the Bible says, separates us from God. It also says that we are haters of God and hostile to God and estranged from God. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 19 says that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against him. In both cases, redemption and reconciliation begins with God. Begins with God. The God who loves us and he accomplished this by Christ's son, Christ his son who died for us on the, on the cross and rose again. In 2 Corinthians, there are a number of things, and I just want to mention them quickly. First of all, the miracle of redemption and reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 is a very familiar verse. 
Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. It's a miracle. If you are here this morning, born again, you are an absolute miracle accomplished by the redemption of Christ that Christ paid on the cross. By faith in Christ, we become new creations. The old way of life goes, a brand new life becomes ours through faith in Christ. Not only is it a miracle, but Christ is the means of reconciliation. Paul says in that same chapter, for Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. We see there that Christ's love for us compelled him to die for us. His love changes us. We are no longer to live for ourselves but for him. It changes who we are. It changes our focus. It changes our values. It changes what's important to us. Not only is he the means and the worker of miracles, but he has given us, the Bible says, the ministry of reconciliation. Verse 18, all this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That ministry is a ministry of serving. As Christians, we are to serve our Lord by letting others know that God wants them to have a harmonious relationship with him. The Bible says that God doesn't take any pleasure in the death of the wicked. That he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to him for repentance and have everlasting life. Christ has committed to us not only the ministry of reconciliation, but the message of reconciliation. We don't have to worry about what we have to share. We have a story of his love, his sacrifice. 2 Corinthians 5.19, that God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us, Paul says, the message of reconciliation. And what, are, what are the components of that message? Well, there are just a few of them. God loves us. Christ died for us. He rose again. He wants to forgive us. He wants to accept us. He will adopt us. He will give us the gift of eternal life. And because of this, we are to see ourselves as his ambassadors or his messengers. He says in verse 20, we are Christ's ambassadors as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. When was the last time with a heart aching and breaking for a friend or a lost one on the, on, on the road to hell that you, you literally beg them, won't you please accept Christ? That's what Paul says. We implore you on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God. An ambassador is one who is called to represent the one who calls him. And we are called by God. God wants to make his appeal to others through us. Paul repeatedly refers to himself as an apostle called or appointed by Christ. And that's why I am such a strong, strong advocate that every person who is truly born again has a life story that God wants you to share with someone who's not a Christian. Your life has been changed if you're truly born again. And he wants you to share your story with those who are not saved. Paul repeatedly refers to himself as one who has been called or appointed by Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 1, he says, Paul, an apostle, of Christ Jesus by the will of God. It's God's will that every born again uh, individual share the good news of what Christ has done in your life or in my life. 
Galatians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle, sent not by men nor by a man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father, who raised him from the dead. Colossians 1, 1, Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God, and Timothy, our brother. Philippians 1, 1, Paul and Timothy, servants of Christ Jesus. To all God's holy people in Christ Jesus at Philippi, together with the overseers and deacons. We also see what I call the might of reconciliation. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 29, Paul says, God made him who knew no sin or had no sin to be sin for us, literally a sin offering, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Reconciliation implies the end of conflict and the establishment of peace. The Bible clearly portrays reconciliation as, a, as something that is achieved by God and offered to us as a gift. Offered to us as a gift. The Father made his Son a sin offering, an atoning sacrifice for each one of us here. The goal for us is to become the righteousness of God through Christ. Hebrews chapter 10 tells us that outside of Christ, no sacrifice for sin is left, but only a fearful expectation of judgment. Two words, redeemed, bought back, rescued, reconciled brought back into a harmonious relationship with God who loves us and proved it by sending his son, his only son, to give his life on the cross for you and for me. I want you to follow me in this prayer. I'm just going to take it real slow. might be on the screen. And let's do it together, okay? Father, thank you for sending Jesus to redeem us from a life of sin and separation from you. Thank you that through him we can be reconciled to you. Jesus, we surrender our very lives to you today. Forgive us and make us to be holy and whole. Amen. I hope that you meant that as a prayer. That's the intent of it. I'm going to ask our deacons if they will come and prepare to assist me in serving the Lord's Supper.